Hi, everybody. Uh, you know, it looks nice and sunny, but then, you know, the wind is there. <laughs> but it's all good. I was like, oh, I'm going to make a video outside because it's so sunny. But um, it's windy. That's okay. How's everyone? So I wanted to post this video about the dream that God gave me. Actually, it was two dreams, two-part dream um, about... Actually, I'm going to tell it because on YouTube, I haven't shared it yet. So here I go. A few nights ago, uh, probably last week, God gave me a dream of a woman. And we were at, we were at like some type of event, like a ball or an event, but everyone was wearing like the really bright colored poofy dresses. It was like prom, you know, but, but it was adults. Um, so some type of ball or event, everyone was dressed really nice, beautiful gowns, um, and so, but the focus is on this woman who I know her. Um, and so anyways, in the dream, she looked so happy, so beautiful. She's married, kids, family. She has a beautiful home, careers. Um, but, in, but at the ball, and she's like the center of attention, you know, like so joyful, happy. But there was someone else there with her um, and she was happy about it, but they weren't part of her family if you kind of like get my drift. Um, so whether it was a person or some type of, just like something else that was there, that was with her and she was happy about it. Um, so then all of a sudden the dream changed to that same scene, but this time that same woman, she was like completely pale, like a ghost, like all the life was out of her. She was just like mournful. She wasn't crying, but you could just tell like, she had lost everything. She was completely white, except for like pink blush. Like someone had just painted her cheeks with pink to like put on a face. Like she looked like a clown. Um, trying to put on like a happy face. But really she had, she was lifeless. Um, and then the scene changed to where she wrote a book and she was showcasing her book and kind of like showcasing the book cover. So she was sitting down. It's like she was recording herself making a book. And it was like almost like a testimony of, of her story of how she lost everything and had to start over completely. And behind her, she was in like a house and it was all white. And there were shelves, like horizontal shelves, um, like long shelves. And they everything was white, but all the shelves were empty. Like she had lost everything and she didn't even have anything that she could put on her shelves. She couldn't even put, she didn't have anything. And then she was, yeah, showcasing her book about how she lost everything and she had to start over. And um, so that was that. So I woke up and I was like, whoa, what a warning, right? What a warning dream that there's this woman who has everything, a house, family, marriage, careers and then she loses it all and then she has to write a book about completely starting all over again and having nothing not even anything that she can even claim as hers to put on her own shelves so then I prayed I prayed I was like an intercessory prayer go into spiritual warfare go into battle for her praying in the spirit and also asking God to give me more more interpretation another dream to clarify just anything you know should I tell this woman whatever you know so anyways the next night I have another dream let me try to remember now. Okay, so yeah, the dream was a completely different scene. This time we were like around a field and I could just see her like walking around the field. Um, and then we were inside of a house in a kitchen and then there was a man um, and like not related to her. And then all of a sudden, and they were kind of like talking. And then all of a sudden the scene changed like we were upstairs and I was kind of like watching and she and this man were just talking, goofing around, and they kind of like started, you know, going in the bed. And then um, I just, I, I was like, no, like, stop. I had a dream about you. So I, in my dream, I'm telling her about my dream that God gave me about her specifically warning her that she's going to lose everything. So I warned her now in this second dream, I said, no, stop. God showed me you're going to lose everything. Just, you know, stop what you're doing. Um... So then she, she stops, she gets up off the bed. She goes and walks over to 
the doorway and she gets on her hands and her knees with her back facing the door, which the door is open. She gets down on her hands and her, her knees and she's, she starts praying and she starts repenting and she surrenders and she's crying out to Jesus. She's crying, she's repenting and I'm saying, yes, this is exactly what God wants you to do to turn, turn from this and repent and surrender to him and repent of your ways and turn fully to him so you don't have to lose everything. Um, and then all of a sudden, like her family and her friends came in and they were, they saw what she was doing and they were happy. They were so happy. They had smiles on their faces and they start praying with her. You know, they're praying with her and they're so happy that she's, that she's praying and surrendering to God. And then after she's done praying, she kind of like, she stands up, wipes the tears off of her face, has a very determined look about her, kind of, you know, brushes off her knees and then very stoically kind of like walks out the door and looks up, doesn't say a word to anybody and just starts walking down the hallway. Um, and it was so amazing. And so what God showed me was basically that, you know, she, he just wanted her to come to repentance and to surrender. And that when she comes to repentance and to surrender, she can start anew and not have to lose her house, not have to lose her marriage have a, a bad relationship with her children, lose her career, basically start over. So it was a warning. And there's also hope, right? God's, but, but how, praise God that God gives us a warning, you know? Um, and even if this has been you and you feel like it's too late, God can still make something wonderful out of something that's been broken. If you still surrender and repent and turn to him, that is when he can work all things out for good for those who love him when we surrender to him and let him start working, but we have to surrender control, you know? Um, sorry, right as I was about to get the interpretation, like this woman, woman walked past to me, so it like totally distracted me. Um, but basically without surrendering and repenting and, and stopping, you know, the hidden sin, the habitual sin, whatever it is, you could lose your family. You could lose your house. You could have to have your testimony be writing a book, starting over with nothing or you can preserve what you have, allow God to fix the brokenness, surrender and repent right now. Don't go back to that habitual sin. Don't go into that room. Don't go into that, you know, and God can write your new story now, keeping your marriage intact, keeping your home, keeping your career. So you don't have to become lifeless, you know? So I just want this to encourage you I want this to encourage you and also serve as a warning that God is watching. And if you don't turn and repent and surrender from the dream, your testimony, your book will be about starting over with nothing. Right? Jesus is coming back for a pure bride. It says in Zechariah that God is going to take the last third of the remnant through the fire to test us like gold, to refine us like silver. Okay. So that the burning off of impurities, it might be painful, but it's for his glory and it's for your benefit. Okay. So may this bless you. May this encourage you. If you need prayer, just, just message me or reply to this video and say, please pray for me. You know, you can be specific or you can just be general, but I will pray for you. You can know that for sure. Okay. So God bless you. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you, give you peace, surrender to him. He will make a way. He will make it so much better for you. Okay. And he will heal you from brokenness, but you have to like acknowledge him, give him control, give, give up, wave that white flag of surrender. <laughs> All right, guys. Bye.